Welcome back to the shop guys. If you've been following the channel lately, you know we're in the middle of a project to build a heat shield around the C6's stock air filter assembly, similar to the heat shield that's called the Hive that Haltech includes with their Killer B system. And we're doing this in an effort to bring the coldest possible air to the LS2 engine because as science tells us, cold air equals power. One of the tests I'll be doing on the heat shield will be to determine if it has any effect on airflow that goes into the engine, specifically how much of the ambient air pressure is able to make its way into the intake manifold. Think back to high school science class for just a second and it taught us that our atmospheric pressure is essentially just a function of what your altitude is versus sea level. For example, if you do live right by the ocean, your atmospheric pressure at all times is right around 14.7 pounds per square inch. If you live higher up, like Denver, Colorado, you only have atmospheric pressure of about 12 and a half pounds per square inch, which means your engines make a lot less power. So at this very moment, my LS2 engine is just sitting there not running. So in this situation, the atmospheric pressure has plenty of time to go through all the little nooks and crannies and equalize the pressure with what's inside the intake manifold so they are exactly the same. And we'll prove that by measuring it in just a few minutes. Once I start the LS2 engine, it starts to breathe in air and it's effectively choked to death by the throttle body. So the atmospheric pressure inside the intake manifold will be significantly less. But when we take off and head down the road and ultimately go to wide open throttle, All of that ambient air pressure tries to make it inside of the engine, but it can't because as the flow speeds up, you've got the restrictions of the air filter, the air filter assembly, the mass airflow sensor, and of course, the throttle body. And that brings us back to the heat shield that I'm in the middle of making and the question that I wanna be able to answer, does the shield have any effect on the ability of the atmospheric pressure to make it all the way through the intake track and into the intake manifold? So how exactly are we gonna measure atmospheric pressure and how much of it as a percentage makes it into the intake manifold? Well, fortunately for us, all LS engines have a manifold absolute pressure sensor or MAP sensor for short, which measures the pressure inside the intake manifold at all times and it lives right here. And fortunately for us, HP Tuner's program makes it incredibly simple to scan and to graph the MAP sensor data even just sitting here with the engine off as long as the ignition's on, all the way through part throttle, and all the way through wide open throttle and all of the RPM. So we already have all of the test equipment that we need. So as I was laying in bed last night, I thought to myself, it would be interesting to see what percentage of the available atmospheric pressure the stock air filter intake system is allowing to enter into the intake manifold at wide open throttle. And keep in mind, the stock LS2 air filter intake system includes all of the following items. The air filters, the air filter housing assembly, the mass airflow sensor, and of course, the throttle body. So let's go ahead and test it. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is hook up HP tuners to the C6. Then I'm gonna go ahead and turn the ignition on without starting the engine and start the scan in HP tuners. And here we have it. This is our current atmospheric pressure. Once I go ahead and start the LS2 engine, which I'll do now, the atmospheric pressure inside the intake manifold drops significantly because the throttle body is effectively choking the engine from having the ability to inhale all of the air that it wants to. Now, once we go to wide open throttle, and I actually already have that data from previous testing that we've done, as you can see at 3000 RPMs, wide open throttle, the intake manifold is in fact seeing the full atmospheric pressure of 14.36 pounds per square inch. But as the engine RPM start to increase, still at wide open throttle, the engine requires more and more air and now is where the restrictions that we talked about a couple minutes ago, like the filter, the filter assembly, the mass airflow sensor, etc., they start to add up and the pressure inside the manifold starts to drop. By 5,000 RPMs, the intake manifold pressure has dropped to 13.92 pounds per square inch. And as we get all the way up to 6,300 RPMs, 
we're at 13.78 pounds per square inch. So there we have our answer, guys. Here in Minnesota at about 950 feet above sea level, the stock LS2 air intake system with pretty clean but a little bit dirty air filters provides 96% of the available ambient air pressure to the engine for making horsepower. So I can't leave well enough alone, and that got me wondering how much of an impact would the air filters getting dirty have on the ability of the LS2's air intake system to get that outside ambient air pressure into the intake manifold. So to simulate the effect of the air filters getting dirty, I set a piece of cardboard on top of each air filter, and then I took the C6 back out for a spin, second gear wide open throttle pull to see what the effect was on manifold absolute pressure. Well, the first restricted air filter test is complete and the result is not at all what I expected. In fact, hit pause for just a second and enter your guess in the comments below as to what you think the pounds per square inch of pressure in the intake manifold dropped to. The result was so far off from what I was thinking that I thought perhaps I had made some sort of error. The pressure dropped from the previous 13.78 pounds per square inch by only a tenth of a pound per square inch down to 13.68. So I went back to the shop and I made larger cardboard restrictions and I inserted them on top of the air filters. Then I went back out and repeated my second gear wide open throttle pull because certainly these would restrict the LS2's air intake and they did, but by only one half of a tenth of a pound per square inch. So these results are just not making any sense to me. So I decided to take a closer look and I removed my entire air filter intake assembly and decided to make my own airflow test bench. And it is crude, very crude. I want you to meet my good friend, the four and a quarter horsepower shop vac. And by the way, I use this thing fairly often to check out exhaust systems and catalytic converters to make sure they're not restricted or plugged. And with four and a quarter horsepower, it moves quite a bit of air. Anyway, as you can see, I've got it laid out and the hose is sealed to my air filter intake assembly. So let's fire it up. We've definitely got quite a bit of suction as you can plainly see and hear. And I think I figured out where the air is getting into the filter. It's through each end, through the pleats. I can definitely feel it with my hands and hear it. So that at least explains to some degree why the pressure drop wasn't more. Now that we understand how the air was getting into and through the filters that were blocked off with cardboard and into the LS2 engine, I'm gonna go a big step further and completely 100% block off the passenger side filter. Why am I doing this? Because we've come this far and I'm curious how this is gonna affect intake manifold pressure. So for this next second gear wide open throttle pull, I'm gonna force the LS2 to breathe entirely through one lung. it ran that good on one filter that is absolutely insane once again the ls2 ran surprisingly well but at least this time we've got a little bit more of a drop of pressure at the intake manifold on the top we've got the histogram of the pull with both air filters operating as they should and right below it i've got the histogram with one of the air filters completely blocked off. And I find it pretty damn impressive that we only lost about one third of a pound per square inch of pressure in the intake manifold at 6,000 RPMs. To me, I've found this to be a rather eye-opening set of experiments, and I just thought of one more test to do. Let's test the effects of going the other direction and test what should be less restrictive than the stock paper filters so that we know whether or not purchasing the K&N filters for about $130 will potentially lead to any more horsepower or not. So before spending any of my hard-earned money on the K&N air filter leap of faith, I went ahead and ran a test 
with the stock LS2 air filter assembly with both filters removed. Now don't worry, it wasn't windy outside, so there really wasn't any debris blowing around in the air. Plus, the stock mass airflow sensor includes a screen whose job it is to straighten out the air for a more accurate air measurement, and the screen doubles as a filter to make sure nothing larger than a very, very small pebble could possibly make its way into the engine. So the risk to the Mighty LS2 was almost zero. And here are the results. Once again on top is the histogram with both air filters installed and operating as they should. And the one right below it is the histogram with both air filters removed. If you look closely, there are a couple of cells that have some very minor differences, but for all practical purposes, they're virtually identical. So my conclusion is that means that our air pressure drop between ambient and what's making it into the intake manifold is either caused by the air filter assembly itself, the mass airflow sensor and its screen, the throttle body, or a combination of the three. So what are the key takeaways from this video? Well, first, I think the stock LS2 air filter assembly has a tremendous amount of air filter surface area. And I think GM probably did this so that folks that live in the Southwest United States could get plenty of life out of their air filters without noticing a big hit to horsepower. I think the second key takeaway is the stock paper filters flow pretty darn well. This is evidenced by the testing we did comparing both filters being used against using no air filters. And because of this testing, I highly doubt that dropping in a set of aftermarket air filters like K&N's would yield any noticeable horsepower. The third key takeaway is we are in fact losing four tenths of a pound of air pressure at 6,000 RPMs by the time the air reaches the intake manifold at wide open throttle. So more testing is in order. I'm kind of itching to remove that screen in the mass airflow sensor that would affect fueling, but we can keep an eye on it and do a wide open throttle pull to see if we pick up any pressure. If you happen to live in Minnesota, the Twin Cities area, and you have an aftermarket air filter set up on your LS2 powered C6, shoot me an email in the email below and I would absolutely love to test your setup. It's not really a key takeaway, but number four, I did some testing about a year ago on my buddy's C6 Z06. That's got the seven liter LS7 engine. He has the Haltech Killer B system in that car, with the Beehive, and that system also uses the card style mass airflow sensor, which I believe is less restrictive. So it's not really apples to apples, but it would be a good comparison just for reference to see what kind of pressure drop we saw in his intake manifold. So depending on what I come up with with some additional mass airflow sensor removing the screen, if we've got any viewers in the Twin Cities area and I can test their aftermarket LS2 system, and what I find from reviewing my buddy's C6 Z06, we might need to do a part two on this video. And finally, number five, let me know in the comments below if you have any heartburn with some of the tests that we did today, if you got any additional tests you'd like to see done. Remember to share, like, and subscribe this video, but most of all, thanks for watching.